Mr. President, I'm very grateful for this privilege. I am Senator Matthew Rogide, Edo South Central District. Mr. President, as a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it behooves on me to join my voice to the very numerous voices of my distinguished Nigerians who are senators representing the different segments of this country. Mr. President, just like in the circumstance of allocating our resources to the different segments of our country, when, of course, we are confronted with the same problem of insecurity in Nigeria, we too must get regimented and lined up to be counted. Mr. President, a while ago, when you were inducting our new members, you mentioned to the visitors that we have a bipartisan approach to, so, to very many issues that are critical to this country. There could be no better truth than that. So then, Mr. President, one of the questions we ask ourselves, we have been talking about insecurity coming up with resolutions and all of that. There was a time we asked you and your leadership to meet with the president. On these issues, some time ago, you went. Mr. President, each time, I can feel, I can feel you. You are as concerned as every other person. You are as concerned as the people who are from these are troubled regions. Mr. President, did that to say that you are equally tired. Only last week, the House of Reps took a resolution and it was sent to, the, was sent to Mr. President. Certain things came out of the presidency. Initially, yes, the president will appear before the National Assembly and explain this, this, the insecurity in Nigeria. We had thought that one, either it was coming as usual to brief us, or to have an interactive session with us. That again never happened because of some persons that will always put the president in a position that will make us believe that the president has no respect for the National Assembly. Mr. President, I hold that view very strongly that Mr. President has no respect for the National Assembly. We must hate, and that's the painful part. Our resolutions don't mean anything. Our bills that are passed are not assented to. It's not just happening, just starting with the nice Senate. It started from the 8th Senate. So as I said, first sit down here. We don't want to bother about motions anymore because resolutions do not have any compelling reason or impact on the executive arm of government. We take a whole lot of time, I have sleepless nights, to propose individual me members' bill only for them not to be assented to. And when you leave here, people tell you, oh, you have, you, have, you have been able to, you know, sponsor uh, bills that are not assented to. Again, this insecurity issue. The other time, today we are hearing from Bono North. Somebody from Kaduna will raise up, will stand up tomorrow. Somebody from Satis will stand up. And we keep going around this thing like a ritual. Mr. President, I want to say again, when Dr. Kazim was, was, I was not in the chamber. I went on television where he said that the primary purpose of any government is security of rights and property of the citizens. That's section 14.2b of our constitution. And I want to also be reminded that the seventh schedule, we have equally taken oath as members of the National Assembly. If we put these two together, what it means that if the executive arm of government has failed the section 14.2b, we too have subscribed to oath in section, in, I mean, in the seventh schedule. If you just oppose this, Mr. President, we must find a solution. This idea of going to the president or coming for, or coming for president, I don't subscribe to that. We have exhausted all avenues. There's nothing more to say. We stood up here to say the service should be, should be changed. Even looking at the enforcement regulation, they should have been changed. The president, the more you say, the more annoying it is to the president. He will never change them. Therefore, Mr. President, please, I want us to have a cautious look at Section 143. Section 143 is not about removal, Mr. President. There are certain actions that the National Assembly can take 
I am not saying the president must be removed. No, it will be premature. But let us take a resolution signed by one third of us, of members of the National Assembly, and sent to him. That again, we are not prodding him, we are compelling him. That, Mr. President, we want to inundate you with the insecurity in this country of our people that are being massacred every day. Mr. President, please take action now. That is compelling. It has not become a doctrine of necessity. Mr. President, in my position, I'm not asking for his impeachment. I'm asking that he be compelled. Let us take a section of Section 143 of the Constitution where we take our resolution signed by one third of the membership of the National Assembly and said to him to tell him that we are serious on this matter. Thank you for the privilege. We'll go to the press.